Are you interested in knowing more about this off-grid solar system and how it works, but you're getting confused with all these battery, battery chemistries, MPPT charge controllers, DC-DC chargers, and all this sort of stuff? Well, this video is for you. My goal at the end of this video is to make you understand, and I'm going to explain a basic overview of the whole system. I'm going to talk about each and every component and give you good practical tips. Just a disclaimer, I'm not an electrician and I'm not going to go too much detail into each and every component, otherwise we're going to be here all day. But at the end of this video, you'll have a good understanding of how this thing works. I'm going to stop talking and we're going to start drawing. All right, so we're going to start with the heart of the system being the battery. And in this example, we're going to use a 12 volt battery. We're going to use my setup as an example. So I have three ways of charging a battery. One is through AC power, so from the house or the caravan pack, AC, converting it into DC to charge my DC 12 volt battery. That's called an AC to DC charge controller. The other one is your solar charge controller, okay? And this is either a PWM or an MPPT charge controller. I'm not going to go into the detail between these two, but in this day and age, forget about PWM. We're going to go straight into an MPPT charge controller. It's way efficient than a PWM. So from here, you have your solar panels. Okay, solar panels into your solar charge controller, into your battery, and the third option is called a DC to DC charge controller. DC because it's going to draw power from my vehicle's alternator into DC into your battery. Hence, it's called a DC to DC charge controller. Then from here, there's two ways we draw power. One is to 12 volts, so 12 volt to 12 volts, straight to 12 volts. So this is all the camp fridges, lights, whatever. This, I want to step it up to AC power. And we need what's called an inverter or an AC inverter. And you'll find that from 12 volts into an AC inverter, you find that the maximum you can probably get will be 3000 watts because you can only go up so much from 12 volts. I'm not sure if it goes up beyond this, but you might find that you'll be maxed out at 3000 watts. Meaning I can then plug in my home appliances, a TV, microwave, kettle into here, as long as they're all under 3000 watts, which pretty much all of them are. Three really important things I want to point out in this basic overview. Number one is the size of the cables. This is the number one cause of fire in this sort of setup. So, the higher the voltage, 240 volts for example, the lower the current that goes through the cable, or the lower the amps. The lower the voltage, 12 volts, the higher the amps. Hence, you'll wonder why your home appliances, your TV, your microwave, your kettle, has got a thin cable, whereas a 12 volt system here, the cable between the 12 volt battery and the inverter is a thick cable, way, way thicker than your kettle, because the lower the voltage, the higher the current. Now, if you've got an undergaged cable, what's going to happen is the cable will heat up, the rubber or the insulation of the cable will heat up, it will melt, it will cause the fire. The other thing I'm going to point out is a fuse box. Each and every component that you plug into your battery, make sure it has a fuse. And the fuse goes into the positive terminals of these components. It's on the positive side, that's the negative side. And the fuses need to be as close as possible to your source, which is your battery, physically closest. On the negative side, I'm going to point out you need or you need to get what's called a shunt or a battery monitor. It can be Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connected, which is good. There's an app on your phone and you can accurately see the ins and the outs into your battery as well as the health status of your battery. Very important. One thing I forgot to mention about the size of the cable in this system is what's called voltage drop. The further away you are from your battery, the more the voltage will drop. And to compensate for that, you need a bigger sized cable. Now let's talk about the different components in the system. There are different battery chemistries out there. And unfortunately, lithium has got a bad name because lithium in people's minds equals fire. 
Now this lithium and lithium iron phosphate, which is a much safer and better chemistry battery. And there's a lot of advantages. Let's, let's, give it, let's put this as an example. We've got a 100 amp hour lithium battery here, and we've got a 100 amp hour AGM or deep cycle battery here. To start with, there's this thing called the depth of discharge. What that is, is the usable capacity that we can safely draw out of this lithium battery goes down to about 90, sometimes 100%. In an AGM battery, you can only safely draw it down to about 50%. Yes, you can go lower, but you can drastically reduce the life of the battery. So you can imagine the same capacity battery, you can only use 50% in an AGM, but you can use nearly 100% in a lithium battery. There's this thing called a BMS, or a battery management system inside every lithium battery. The better the quality of the product, the better the BMS system, which is very important. It controls the battery, performance, efficiency, and most importantly, the safety of the battery. The other thing is the life cycle, the duty cycles of the battery, which dictates the lifespan of the battery. So in a lithium ion phosphate battery, you can draw it down three to 4,000 times. In an AGM or deep cycle battery, only hundreds of times, sometimes 1,000, 800, or 1,000 times. So the lifespan is much, much greater. After a lithium battery has been cycled three to 4,000 times, it doesn't mean that it's deemed useless. All it means is that it's degraded its capacity to about 80%. So meaning if we started with a 100 amp hour lithium battery, after a few thousand cycles, we'll end up with an equivalent of 80 amp hours. Another advantage of a lithium or a lithium iron phosphate battery is that the charging characteristic is very efficient. It charges so much faster than any other battery, which is very important if you live off grid or if you intend to use it in an off grid situation. And the other thing is the weight, the physical weight of a lithium battery is much, much lighter than the other batteries. So if you decide to get a lithium battery, make sure to get the lithium iron phosphate chemistry battery. Not only is it better performing, much more efficient, but most importantly, much, much safer. Just on a side note, here in Australia, they do have a law that if you're running a battery in your caravan, it needs to be in a sealed box, isolated from your living space. And just in case you're wondering, in my caravan, this system has been put in place before that law is passed. And this caravan is not on the road. It's just sitting on a, on a block of ours here in the homestead and it's not going to be on the road for a long time. So it's actually out of the road, you know, just in case the internet police makes a silly comment. Now let's move on to the charge controllers. Let's put it this way to keep it simple. Let's pretend the power that comes off your grid or the power that comes off from the sun into your solar panel. Let's just call that as your fuel, your petrol, your diesel. The charge controllers are going to be your fuel filter and the battery is going to be your engine. If you draw dirty fuel, right, and your filters can't filter the dirty fuel properly, you're going to end up with dirty fuel in your engine. What I'm trying to say is that as much as you can afford it, spend money on your charge controllers to preserve the life of your battery. You get my point. Now with solar panels, you'll find that the main difference between a cheap one and an expensive one is how efficient it is. So there's monocrystalline panels and there's polycrystalline panels and all that sort of stuff. Put it this way, a really efficient panel will collect more light in low light. So if, the, if, if we have 100% sunlight and the UV is blazing down, cheap panel versus expensive panel, there's a little bit of difference, but the moment the light goes dim, dusk or dawn, you'll find that an expensive panel will feed way more watts and amps into your charge controller than a cheap panel. Another thing with good quality panels is that they're wired in a way where even if you get partial shade on the actual panel, the rest of the panel still produces enough power. And just with the panels, heat reduces the efficiency of them as well. So some of them, you'll be attached directly on top of a roof, heat builds up underneath it and really toasts the panel and reduces the efficiency. For your inverters, there's a couple of types. You've got your modified sine wave inverter and your pure sine wave inverter. Personally, I would go straight to the pure sine wave inverters. There's a reason why they're more expensive and they're designed for sensitive equipment like computers and the likes. With your inverters, as long as it's turned on, it doesn't matter if you've got anything plugged into them, they consume a little bit of power. So if you want to save all the power, make sure if you're not using it, switch it off. For the shunt or the battery monitor, I always suggest people get 
one that you can monitor remotely. So Bluetooth or better yet Wi-Fi, because that way you don't have to physically be in front of it. So if you're in bed in the middle of the night and you when you check your battery status, you can always look at the app on your phone and see what it's doing. This video might have been a bit too long for your liking, but if you're still watching, hey, thanks for sticking around. But most importantly, I hope you've learned something today. If you have, don't forget to share it to your friends and family. It might be of benefit to them. And please do subscribe to my channel. It helps me greatly. Smash the like button. I'm going to create a separate video for the battery and solar setup we've got in the off-grid cabin. So stick around for that. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.